Lucy Riley with Ballots for Bernie coming to you for another Sunday live stream. Uh, today we're going to be interviewing our Voting Rights Task Force guru, Jim Soper. Yeah, he's the guru. Uh, we are coming off of a successful Take Back the Vote conference this past weekend in Richmond, California, where we assembled the election integrity community to bring you the greatest, latest and greatest in progressive uh, information regard, regarding election integrity issues across the country. Um, we heard from Bob Patrickus, we heard from um, Paul Thomas with uh, EJ USA. Um, we had a live stream coming in, uh, uh, um, uh, interview Lutz. with um, Ray Lutz. And we hope that you enjoyed everything that you saw this weekend. If you missed out, you can go to Ballots for Bernie Facebook page. You can see all of our live streams. We have about 12 now that you can watch. And educate yourselves on the issues that are facing us as voters in America today. So, Jim, we've got some very interesting federal bills to talk about. Um, we have uh, Hank jo Representative Hank Johnson that has introduced two election integrity bills a couple of weeks ago in the House. Um, we have H.R. 6072 and H.R. 6073. Could you talk to us a little bit about those bills? Yeah, these are hugely important. Hugely important. We've been fighting, the Voting Rights Task Force has been fighting Internet voting in California. There have been four bills and three ballot initiatives over the past few years. and primarily because of the Secretaries of State, but we've been the people that have been in Sacramento fighting these things. We've beaten all of them, but it's getting tiring. And this is this is like, well, baseball's in the playoffs. You get into these can't-lose games. And if Internet voting gets in, the game's over. That's it. Uh, because it's going to spread and so on, especially if it gets into California. Mm -hmm. Well, now Hank Johnson has come in and introduced a bill that would, would require paper ballots and auditing, mm -hmm. both of which points would exclude, by necessity, Internet voting across the country. Because mm -hmm. we're seeing some introduction in Alaska, a little bit in West Virginia, Arizona, a little, they're trying to get their toe in there to, to open it up, and this bill would just say no. Yeah. Good and we had a huge impact from this hacking of the DNC website. Mm -hmm. And then the officials coming along and saying, oh, well, they, they were hacked. And it was the Russians, the evil Russians. I don't know who it was. That's not the point. The point is this uh, election databases got hacked. Mm -hmm. And finally, the national security complex is saying, hmm, these things can get hacked. We've been saying this for 10 years. Right. And, and the Secretary of State of California has been saying this for 10 years. And We're talking about Deborah Bowen, right? Deborah Bowen. Mm -hmm. And researchers at MIT and Princeton and Michigan have just shown that these things can hack. And finally, the government's saying, yeah, maybe it can get hacked. Yeah, of course it can. So mm -hmm. that has been, I think, a sea change. Mm -hmm. And with that, Hank Johnson is coming in saying, we've got to increase the security of these machines, mm -hmm. these voting systems, and the voter registration systems. It was really more the voter registration systems that were being hacked in Illinois, Arizona, and Riverside County, California. That's where the officials admitted mm -hmm. that their databases got hacked. Mm -hmm. And let's remind our viewers at home, what we're talking about is all those problems you had, folks, when you showed up to the polls, and you had been voting as a Democrat for 20 years, you uh, were a NPP voter, and you showed up, and you were nowhere on the rolls, or you were given a, a, a ballot that did not have the um, uh, presidential choice to vote on, and you didn't know anything about it. So we're talking about issues that affected you at the polls this year in June, all right? Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, even in Riverside, Riverside County said, yeah, the database, voter registration databases got hacked. That's the one that's they're willing to admit. We don't know about the others, and we don't know exactly how, who got affected in Riverside County. It doesn't matter. It matters. It matters if you're showing up and you can't vote. But we've got to clean up the whole system. And finally, 
the security officials are saying, yeah, these systems can get hacked. And so Mr. Johnson's introduced two bills. One, we're going to have paper ballots, mm -hmm. which is a great redundant way to protect your information from hacking. Protect your voting information from hacking is have paper ballots. Paper is a little hard to hack from Russia or China or, right. or somebody's basement. Uh, the other other thing then is we got to have good audits, mm -hmm. and that's part of the bill. I haven't had the chance, to, I've read the summary, but not the full details. It goes on for 90 to 92 pages. Mm -hmm. I will get to that. But uh, Jim, do we have a copy of the bill on countedascast.com yet? Uh, no. But we can get it on there for folks. It will, you can search for HR 672 for that mm -hmm. first one, mm -hmm. 6072. I will get it up on countedascast.org uh, fairly soon. Mm -hmm. And folks, mm -hmm. we'll be posting about this on ballots for Bernie as well, mm -hmm. so we can dissect that either in our live stream comment feed today or we'll post a link, more than, more than likely we'll post a link on ballots for Bernie to the bill and we can dissect it together online. Okay, Jim? This is a really important bill. Uh, we haven't seen something happening in Washington in this direction for quite a while and it's finally happening. Uh, this covers the whole country. And Jim, so. in, your in, your, in your personal opinion, you, of course, you've already said that you think this is a sea change. What do you think has caused that sea change? What do you think is making our officials in Washington wake up and say, you know what, we've got to do something about that? Because it's not just these emails um, that have come out on WikiLeaks. Um, I, I have my own um, idea of what it is, but I want to hear from you. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, I'm not going to pretend to know what's going on behind the scenes, but the DNC email hats was very visible. Mm -hmm. And coming as it did just before the Democratic Convention, um, it, it just got a lot of publicity mm -hmm. and underlined the fact that elections are important. Well, yeah, they are important. We've known that for a while. And underlined the fact that they're important enough for uh, people to go try and influence through hacking. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something going on in the background that I'm not privy to. Mm -hmm. But I will just take it at face value right now that we had a highly visible hack of election material and people were saying, we got to do something about it. What do we do? What do we do? And, and so the FBI comes along and issues warnings to elections officials saying, hey, your systems can get hacked, and Homeland Security floats the idea of we can provide advice as part of what we do, what they do. We can provide advice to elections officials about how to secure your system. You do that by declaring elections to be critical infrastructure. And that's the second bill, H.R. 6073. That's the more controversial one. Uh, because it would authorize Homeland Security to set up an operation to, we want to make sure they just stick with us, advise. Sure. We're not asking them to take over the system. We don't want them to take over the system. Mm -hmm. We want them to provide technical security advice to election officials mm -hmm. and encourage them to go shore up their systems because they're not secure. What's interesting is that the officials that are pushing back hardest saying, we don't want your advice, Georgia, mm -hmm. Mississippi, mm -hmm. the places that have the worst systems yes. don't want this advice. Mm -hmm. They don't want anyone snooping they around their process. They don't want anybody snooping around. So that's, that much is obvious. That's a hint to me that somebody's doing something right there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's those specific states, I think, I'm not quite sure what Ohio did, but I think uh, Secretary of State of Ohio said, we don't, wanna, we don't want your help. Well, Ohio's not got a great track record <laughs> in this stuff. <laughs> so we want to look at both. We really want to get 6072 mm -hmm. paper ballots passed as the rule for the whole country because there's about 13, 14 states that do not have paper ballots. Mm -hmm. People don't realize this. Georgia's a swing state now. It's become a swing state. 
Uh, they don't have paper ballots. The whole thing's run by Diebold, the whole state. Uh, that makes me nervous. And so if we have a federal bill saying, we're going to get paper ballots here in all of these states, then the whole country's going to move forward and, and, and we're going to have more secure elections. So that we're looking forward to. The second one, we want to read carefully. Uh, insofar as they're also, they will also provide some funding for research on how to build more secure mm -hmm. systems. Mm -hmm. But it's also about letting Homeland Security offer advice. And if they keep it to that, they're good. Uh, the current government federal agency, the Election Assistance Commission, that's supposed to help, again, provide advice to the states about these, that's not a great organization. It has a history of corrupt leadership. And so I'm not too happy with them either, uh, that they're the chief operating officers or chief executive operators executive officers have been caught um, in one case when I can't remember Alice Miller I think was her name she, when she was working for this District of Columbia she was tweaked the system to get a higher pay status oh. she was stealing from the District of Columbia and then they made her chief operating officer of the Election yeah, that condition. sounds like some Michael Vu voodoo. Yeah, it's just <laughs> yes, around out of Ohio and uh, runs to San Diego, right? Yes, yeah. she didn't belong there. So I don't have a very good impression. In California, opted out of federal testing, out of the Election Assistance Commission testing. We said, "You guys aren't doing a good job. We're going to do our own." Mm -hmm. And not only will we do it, we will do it better than you do. And I've seen the regulations that California wrote, and they do a better job than what the federal people do. So I think that was a good move. Uh, we need, we've talked about 58 county chaos throughout mm -hmm. the state of California, and well, we have 50 state chaos too. Yes, we do. Yes, so we, we do. need to get to some kind of standardization across the country using good standards. And one thing we know for certain looking back on the history of American um, movements in this country. What happens in California spreads to the rest of the states. And what we want to do with um, our partners in the California Election Integrity Coalition is to move the ball forward in California, working with um, EJUSA, working with um, Citizens Oversight Project, working with Trust Vote, working with um, our friends in Humboldt County who are providing such a great role model for the rest of the ROVs in the state to follow. We want to come together and we want to push the envelope. We know that many hands make light work and when we work together we can keep more eyes on the process. And going back full circle to my question, it was much more transparent um, than I think that you thought I was asking you. We are seeing a sea change because people all over the country are now tuning in, getting interested in this issue, realizing that this. they can be a part of it at the grassroots level. And folks, that w that's what we're doing on uh, Ballots for Bernie today with this live stream. And all of our live streams is inviting you to be a part of the process of educate, agitate, demonstrate, and legislate. So, Jim, let's talk a little bit about um, what's happening here in the state of California. We've got some uh, bills here that we want to talk about. Timing, um, who do we talk to? Um, we also want to talk about um, legislation that we as an election integrity movement in the state of California can move forward ourselves have introduced into um, state, the State House in Sacramento and push forward um, with standardizing this process here in the state of California for our elections. That's something that the Voting Rights Task Force has been doing for since 2008. Mm -hmm. So that's eight years. And we're going to go back next year. Uh, we've acquired some experience. You just start to do it and you start to learn right. about how to do it. Uh, and we have ideas for about seven, eight bills that we could introduce. We're not one of the things we've learned. The first time the Voting Rights Task Force went into this, the first year, eight people had different ideas. Mm -hmm. And so they all wrote down their ideas, and we went up to Sacramento and said, here's eight ideas. And I knew that wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. 
because uh, the expectation was here. Here's a menu of ideas. You pick one. Now, you go in. You you sit down and you look at the ideas and figure out what's the most doable and the most important will have the most impact. We're the experts, uh, if you will. We're not the only experts, but we, yeah. as you learn over time, you, you learn what's more important, what's, and then you learn also what's doable, and you make a choice of one or two. When you go into somebody's office, you don't want to talk about eight bills. You want to talk about one. Last year we did two. Uh, I wouldn't want to do three. Because you confuse the message. Right. We're just coming in and we're saying, these are important. These are the most important. Mm -hmm. And then you focus on making your presentation clear, getting your ideas clear across to them, and so on. So that was the first step, is to take the list of possibilities and, set, and, and figure out what's most important and go into that. If people are going to do this in California, and I'll say, I'll, I'll sh just note here, this is my web page, countedascast.org, and there's a welcome, and here it talks to you about how you can join the Voting Rights Task Force, and we had a, a great conference last weekend, the video of the first few Sunday presentations, the link is here, and here are the slides, the PowerPoint slides to those first presentations. What we're talking about now is talking about lobbying for transparency, the second one. And you'll see a lot of notes there. Go download it, look at it, uh, and some of the pointers that we'll mention today, we mentioned there. Uh, the link's not working quite yet, but the the, the typing is, the, the link itself isn't jumping, but there's a very important page uh, which I don't have up here right now, but there's, if you go to that page, it gets you to the legislature page about a bill, and in the upper right, you can type in SB 450, and then it'll tell you everything about that, that bill. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important page to know. Uh, and just towards the bottom here, I had a sample bill, a bill I wrote, back in 2009, proposal, and that's Darren Chesson from the Senate Elections Committee sat down and said, okay, you want to talk about several sections of the bill, what's this, why is there, what's the problem, what are you trying to solve, what's it going to cost, and what's the benefits? He gave a structure. Um, that followed it. You can write bill proposals mm -hmm. in two fashions. One, I, in that one, I sat down and looked at the law and took a, my best guess at what the law should read. Mm -hmm. You can, sometimes it gets a little more complicated and you can write an intent bill. Mm -hmm. And it says, it is our intent that this happened and that this happened and this happened. And in both cases, by late January in California, and different states are going to do this differently, but in California, by late January, you need to have that proposal submitted to Ledge Council. Mm -hmm. Ledge Council is a group of lawyers who take these proposals and make sure they're, they're good legalese for an actual law because that's what they want to turn it into and they, they try to write the law for you. Especially when we said intent, they, she turned that in intent language into into a real legalese. Mm -hmm. And that became AB 2824. Sometimes they, they could, these sledge council people can mangle it. We had their second bill was just a few words modifying a sentence, and they mangled it. And it, that didn't get introduced as a bill, but we were going to um, amend it, get it amended. Uh, but you need to get that in by late January. Your legislature, your assembly person, or your senator will probably do this as a, as a, a favor to a constituent. Mm -hmm. There's no commitment that they back the bill. 
but we've had this where one of our members has been a constituent of somebody in the assembly, and they we go and say, can you submit this to Ledge Council? And they said, sure. And they send it in. Mm -hmm. And then it can take a couple of weeks and it'll get back. That's the first step. So you want to have something into Ledge Council as early as possible, by the third week of January. Then they have to introduce the senator or the assembly person has to introduce the bill by late February. And it's got to go in the hopper. And that's the sort of critical point. And it's not introduced until it's got a number. When you've got the number, start to celebrate. You've accomplished something. Now, we've had many trips to Sacramento, knocking on doors, trying to find somebody to introduce it. Our experience has been it really helps to be a constituent. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom Corbett got a bill, AB 813, introduced by his representative his assembly person. She was a Republican. But they understood the necessity of a bill putting detailed information about election results up on the internet. Mm -hmm. AB 813 said, you're going to get that up at the end of the canvas period, at the end of 30 days. But it was his assembly person. And then AB 2824 that was introduced last year was uh, mostly thanks to Richard Tan, who, who campaigned um, very hard for Mr. Assemblymember Thurman, and he got, he got thanked mm -hmm. because they introduced the bill. And that, that's the most important thing, that's the hardest thing to do right now, is to get the bill introduced, mm -hmm. and then you've got to get it passed, and there's a whole whole bunch of steps there, which I talked about in the speech that Sunday morning, a uh, whole bunch of steps going through various committees and full floor votes and so on that you have to go through after that. You're not done when you get it introduced. You want to go out and, and get political support mm -hmm. for your bill. You want to get um, clubs, political clubs to support it, or even Lions Club or whatever to support it. You want certain significant people to support it. And you want to go talk to the registrars. It's so exciting to think so. that we, as Ballots for Bernie, working with the Voting Rights Task Force and some of our other folks that are working with us under the uh, California Election Integrity Coalition, can actually be bringing legislation you can do this through the state house in California. Um, can that could this. give us uh, one percent hand counted paper ballot audits in every county as a part of the process and not a suggestion, not just a strong suggestion and a close vote. That we could introduce uh, a bill um, that even takes that idea further and integrates um, Dr. Philip Stark's um, idea. Uh, right, and yeah. we could see that move through um, our state house. That's very exciting. A few people can do it. We were three people last year that got AB 2824 mm -hmm. introduced. Tom got AB 813 introduced all by himself. When it came to the committee hearings, we were up there and supporting him and testifying with him. But he got that thing introduced by himself. That is, it's, that's it's, truly amazing. Do this. It that's takes a lot amazing. of work. That a few dedicated individuals can help us change the political landscape yeah. for our elections process here in the state of California. And if we can do it here in California, we can do it all over the country. That is amazing. That is amazing. Thanks I, for sharing that. If you had told me that we could do this 10 years ago, I said, yeah, forget it. You know, and it's, We're not... Uh, highly paid lobbyists and so on. No, we're just citizens who want to see a better democracy. And if you go in there and go and prepare it and, and you don't quit, you can't quit. We're going back. AB 2824 ran out of time. Well, we'll take it back. And we'll take that and a few other ideas. And, and we'll go back and hopefully... Other people in California and other people across the country will get the idea, hey, I'm going to go to my legislature, I'm going to talk to my representatives, 
and try to get them to introduce a bill. You know, the first time we did it, we had eight, eight, ten bills, and none of them made it in. We had one by, and then you go back, we went back with what became 2024, and that's when the ballot crunch hit. And there was a period of four or six years where there was no money in Sacramento to do anything. And so, all right, uh, we're not going to pound our head against the wall with anything that's going to be require some money. Mm -hmm. You have to be intelligent about this and not waste time trying to do things that just are not going to succeed. Mm -hmm. um, Work smarter and not harder, yes. Yeah. Uh, but you can do it. We got a bill introduced. We're going to take it back. We have some other ideas that we can talk about. Um, yeah, that's great news. So, Jim, talk to us about the process. Um, so, you just talked to us a little bit about a strategy. Let's talk about um, county action. How would we start on the county to to move this idea forward? There are several things happening in the county that are going to be really important. Part of which is we're going to need some for these bills. So research at the county level. Uh, is Bernie is, Balance for Bernie creates county groups. We're going to ask them to do a little research on a couple things, one of which is going back to 2824, 813, the detailed precinct reports. A detailed precinct report is how many votes did each candidate get in each precinct. And we want to know which counties are already doing this on election night. Mm -hmm. you know, Sac Santa Clara does a good job, Sacramento does a good job, some others not so good. Mm -hmm. We would like to know for as many counties across the state how many are already doing this on election night because that was what AB 2824 was, not just 30 days later. We want That information is critical on election night for candidates mm -hmm. and for a lot of people. Uh, Let's back up a little bit and yeah. talk to our viewers a little bit more about specifically the, the numbers on election night um, should be reported publicly. Um, does the ROB office do that? Um, are we having poll workers, well, poll monitors doing that at the no, precinct no, no, level? No. How does that happen? All the information comes in from the precincts on these memory cards, and they get from, fed in from the memory card into the tabulator. Uh, that sucks up all the information, and it has. It can tell you it has all this information about how many votes each candidate got in each precinct, mm -hmm. and if they do it right, and that should match up with the um, with the the receipts from the polling the, sites. The end of day page many should folks match on against that data. But went out all over the county and got copies of those. The data from those receipts, which you call receipts, and the date tapes should match with the information that's in that tabulator on election night. Mm -hmm. It should match exactly. The problem is we're not getting that data. Mm -hmm. And I, as a computer programmer, said, I, I, I know the information's in there. Mm -hmm. It's in a database, and it's in a fairly rudimentary database, and you should be able to put it out onto a CD-ROM drive, a thumb drive, or something. Walk it over, no connection to the internet, but walk over it over to a computer that has a connection to the internet, internet and upload it in a human readable, preferably spreadsheet format. Mm -hmm. And that gets you something, a couple things. And that would be um, for public consumption, or that would be well, just for... No, for everybody. Okay. It's on the internet. Mm -hmm. It's not the ballast, but the how much, how many votes did each candidate get mm -hmm. in each precinct at that point in time. We let's talks about a snapshot protocol. Well, we want one snapshot on election night mm -hmm. because, as we saw with Florida 2000, the data on election night is really important. Mm -hmm. And people make decisions about whether or not to concede or fight or whatever on election night, and we can even start to see some some kinds of shifts sometimes in the data. Mm -hmm. So we want that on election night, and Ray Lutz in his pioneering work in, in San Diego is talking about a snapshot protocol while he's talking about what detailed precinct reports. And he wants that just before they start the 1% manual tally. Mm -hmm. So you can compare the 1% manual tally against published data. Mm -hmm. We need that data up there and published. Mm -hmm. And we need it in a format. The other major reason we wanted it in a spreadsheet um, 
It's because before or even now, some counties will give you uh, a PDF file, print it out and pass it out to the press of how many votes everybody got. Well, California, Los Angeles has 4,500 precincts. Yeah, that's really hard to break. Uh, you that's put four candidates in one race in 4,500 4, precincts, you're up to 18,000 votes. You're going to type those in by hand and to see if they total up right? Mm -hmm. I think not. You want it in some kind of electronic data that can be read by a spreadsheet and then put in a little formula for the spreadsheet to total up how many votes each candidate got and to double check that. Right now, that's not happening. Uh, that's in any of the counties? Or a, no, Santa Clara the does this right. nicely. Sacramento, some of the counties do, some of them don't. What I'm asking county grips to do is to go look on election night and see if their county is doing it. Get back to us so that when we go to Sacramento and we say, well, we know these, 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 and these counties are doing it, and these are not. And so these are, we need to find a reasonable way to encourage the counties that are not doing it to do it. One of the parts of our bill that was really important was we don't want to create a lot of extra work for the officials that are running the election. They're busy. Mm -hmm. We know that. But, but this, I, is a, this is how... As election integrity activists on the grassroots level, we can be part of this process. We can be part of it, get the information. Mm -hmm. That data in some of these operations, we talked with Santa Clara County and they, they do it, they, they download it in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's easily so, done. The question uh, in is, some systems. Yeah. So our bill said if it's easily done, mm -hmm. do it. If it's not easily done, we're not going to push it, but then future systems that get adopted by California, it's got to be easily easily doable. That's part of where California starts to impact. Or it's not country. a viable option as a machine to buy. Yeah. Right. If, if it, we want, part of our proposal was future systems that are purchased in California mm -hmm. have to be able to do this. Just as we, we didn't have it in this bill because it wasn't about ballot images, but we would say future systems have to keep images of the ballot so the public can. That's check. another possible bill that we can. That's bring another forward. possible bill that we want to go to. But one of the advantages of working in California is that if the California market says we want this in the machines, mm -hmm. it's going to be in those machines across the country. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're thinking: what kind of impact are we going to have? beyond California. Some of the changes we can make to the law would just impact California. Mm -hmm. Others where you're defining what goes into the election systems would have impact nationwide, and so that's what we were shooting mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all such exciting news, it's Jim. stuff. <laughs> so, Jim, let's talk about um, state regulations that we need yeah. to be um, aware of. There was a bill, again, I talked about it in the presentation, the second one. Um, AB 1970 mm -hmm. that was fairly short and simple and said that the Secretary of State shall issue uh, regulations concerning the processing of vote-by-mail ballots and the processing of provisional ballots. They shall promulgate these regulations. And from what I've seen happening in Sacramento is they will write up a, a draft of regulations and then have a public hearing about it. Mm -hmm. And then finally, it's up to the Secretary of State to do what they want, but I believe they're going to have to have a public hearing about this. The people that are watching how these vote-by-mail ballots and provisional ballots are being processed in November or saw it in June should take notes get together and say, well, we think this should happen, this should happen, this should happen. And try to get everybody, if you can get all 58 counties agreed, great. Or a group of people agreed. And then start communicating with the Secretary of State's office about this, about the regulations that he is now, by law, supposed to come up with. And again, this is where you're going to have some impact because you've been there. And you've seen it happening, and you've seen really, again, the chaos mm -hmm. across the counties, because they all do it differently. Mm -hmm. Some counties actually let you observe, mm -hmm. actually let you see the votes. Many of them don't. Uh, some counties 
actually do a random selection of precincts after they've declared what what the results are. Fresno did their random selection a month ahead of time. Really? Wow. And, and a lot of help that is. Yeah. That really instills some trust. That's, in yeah. Talk about... Uh, it's laughable. It's laughable. It's, you know, it's, it's not the, the, the intent of the law. I, I talked to one person who's been at this for a lot longer than I have and been an advisor, and he said he didn't know about it. He said that just defies everything that's the point of the 1% random selection. But that's selection. what can happen when you've got 58 cats running in 58 different yeah. directions, right? And, yes. and, and the rule book isn't detailed enough. Mm -hmm. Well, now the legislature in its wisdom has said to the Secretary of State, you're going to start to write detailed regulations about this. So and what we're telling the folks at home is all of the headache that you witnessed on June 7th and subsequently with our ballots for Bernie Crew that you witnessed as ballot count observers in our ballot count um, observation uh, initiative that we actually caused Alex Padilla to put off certification for a couple of weeks because we raised, raised so much cane. Um, all of those problems, we want you to bring those forward. Get organized. Sit together. Agree on in what's your county. In your county, yes. or even with then the folks that you were monitoring the ballot count with, and let's get all of those problems organized. Let's get let's them get together. Let's get organized and let's go into these hearings with a an organized message. Everybody on the same page. Everybody saying the same things. This 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 is important. And uh, just keep on repeating that message. And the more warm bodies with an articulate message to share with the Secretary of State, the more power we have as a collective to move the ball forward on standardization in the state of California, folks. We need you. We need you to, to be there when they have the hearings. We need you before the hearings. Just Start your homework. Start collecting ideas now, or in, in November when you're watching this go on. And then... And we're going to be talking to you more about this on Balance yeah. for Bernie, folks. Lead guide, we will lead guide and direct you through this process of how to do this work in your county. We'll be there to answer, answer questions um, coming in on the Facebook page, okay? Then start in... December, if you're not working on the bills, to work on the regulations and, and, and start writing up proposals for what the regulations should look like. Now, be aware that regulations are not as strong as law. There's advantages and disadvantages. In this case, the Secretary of State will write the regulations. The next one can rewrite them. Mm -hmm. uh, the law is much harder to change. Mm -hmm. And you have a structure of the law that uh, you have to work with. But then there's parts of the law, such as whether or not vote by mail and provisional ballots are subject to the 1% random tally that are right now being questioned, bravo re Lutz, and whether or not the interpretation of the law is going to change. But if the, I don't know what the judge is going to say. I, I have some, some opinions, um, but I'll, I'll just leave it to that. The regulations can influence this. And if it gets into the regulations, then the counties are supposed to follow it. But people have to be there to, to make sure they are. I met uh, a wonderful lady Sunday from Sonoma County. She said she was the first person to ever show up to watch the elections. Wow. Wow. We need people to show up. We need people to show up and watch this and find out what's going on. Uh, and give us feedback. Sonoma has its own system, by the way, so it's unique. Mm -hmm. But she told me she was the first person there, that they'd never seen anybody. You know, it's shocking, was, isn't it? It's shocking. It it's really shocking. Uh, but here we are in the state of California with probably some of the most well very, we've got folks that are dedicated to their political issues and their movements, and somehow the election integrity movement has been sequestered in the corner. People are not even aware 
we're not even aware until this primary on a large scale. I know we've got folks all over the country that are very dedicated to this issue, but it seems like this primary has opened people's eyes in mass all over the country that something has got to be done about our elections process because we can run progressives until the cows come home until we clean up our elections process there is the open door for fraud there's the open door for the, these elections to be our, our our vote to be pulled right out from under us just like the rug pulled right out from under us and if we care about our issues if we care about getting legislators in office who are going to help us turn our hopes and dreams into the laws that affect our daily lives. We have got to create trust in the system. So folks, listen, send us your questions that you've got. Um, if you're following us at home right now, some of, it, some of you will be picking up on this live stream after we're finished. Please feel free to um, send us your questions anyway. We will answer as many of these questions as we can get to. I want to um, remind everyone to tune in to Ray Lutz's page, um, Citizens Oversight Projects on Facebook. Um, he is doing some amazing work down in San Diego County. Uh, his lawsuit um, could very well help us open up ballot boxes all over the state and get a look at the ballot images. I want to um, remind you to check in with John, our friend John Brakey in uh, Pima County in Arizona. Uh, he had a breakthrough this week with his uh, court case um, and we are seeing uh, the precinct in question in this case. Um, the judge ruled that the ballots cannot be destroyed as the um, county uh, was uh, threatening to do, that those ballots are public property of the voters of the state of Arizona. And that John is one step closer to being able to get um, his eyes on those ballots as well. Um, we want to remind you also to check in with our friend Paul Thomas in uh, Massachusetts. His website um, is electionjusticeusa.com. Um, they're doing some amazing work with some of our friends in Nor Northern California right now. Uh, keep your eyes out for civil grand juries. Uh, we'll be able to do a lot of work moving the ball forward with the election integrity movement through those civil grand juries here in the state of California. And folks, if you like what you're seeing, please consider donating to us. Go to gofundme.com forward slash take back the vote. Uh, we are bringing you these uh, election integrity live streams every week. We would love to be able to fly some of these great folks in from all over the country, uh, put them up in a hotel room for the weekend, and pick their brains about what's going on in their state. Many hands make light work. We can all come together. There's no room for ego when we are talking about our precious right to vote. We can come together. We can make a difference. Folks, thank you for tuning in once again to Ballots for Bernie live stream. We'll be coming to you next Sunday here in Berkeley, California. And Jim, would you like to add something else? Yeah, uh, we should say that the previous live stream, what is this number? Well, our weekly. This is actually, um, Addie added four more um, at the end of our Addie's conference. So I yeah. think we're up to this, maybe 16 or 17. You can go to YouTube and search for California Election Integrity Coalition, and you will find the series of live streams live that streams we've been doing YouTube, since right. August. Right. When we started August. Um, <laughs> we've done a lot of work in a short period we've of done time. Done a lot of work, <laughs> and so you can find them there. Also, look at ballots for Bernie. We're going to come up with. Uh, more talk about the proposed legislation. We didn't even get into the things we're thinking about other than, well, we, we've mentioned a couple, the detailed precinct reports, uh, requiring ballot images, risk limiting audits. Uh, maybe we need to change the law. We'll discover more after 
we get through the regulation hearings about uh, what does it mean to really observe elections, mm -hmm. how do we enable that, how do we make that happen. Uh, there will be, I think one of the things we're going to look forward to this coming year is funding for open source systems. Mm -hmm. San Francisco and Los Angeles are building at least public election systems, publicly mm -hmm. owned, and it's time now for the state of California to come in and help those along. Mm -hmm. Again, this will have a national mm -hmm. impact mm -hmm. if we get this passed. So let's go ahead. The, the timing on some of this, for 10 years we've been working on open source systems, trying to get it, uh, get it done, make it happen. And for a long time, it just wasn't the right time. And all of a sudden, it's, things are coming together. That's something we're going to be pushing for. When we ask for you to write your assembly member or senator, please do so. Write them, call them. They need to hear from the public. Because if nobody says anything, then they're going to just do whatever they want. There have been... For three of the internet voting bills that were blocked, Voting Rights Task Force, three people were the only people that showed up for the hearings. Mm -hmm. The only people interested. Mm -hmm. We're glad we went there, but we need help. We need more support. We need people to say, yeah, this matters. Mm -hmm. Observing elections matter. How you count the ballots matter. And it matters a lot, and this is a long term. You can't think of well, what do we do in the next decades. So, folks, you can look forward to so. calls to action on ballots yeah. for Bernie as well. We'll be telling you about legislative action that's happening in the um, in Sacramento in the State House, and we will be asking you to join us on the State House lawn. I go in and knock on your legislators' door, tell them that you have come from far and wide to talk to them about this legislation and that you need them to back it or you need them to um, give it the kibosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, go work on, we'll be glad to provide advice if you want to work on a specific bill. Mm -hmm. We'll provide advice and go make it happen. Go knock on doors mm -hmm. and talk to people and learn how it works and may not get it in the first year or the second year, but you'll get it in if you keep at it. Right. So phone calls, um, emails. We'll be asking you to join us on specific days. Feel free to send us any questions that you have. We've got a few more minutes left of the live stream. Um, let's see. So we have uh, one question that's come through. Um, is there a trial set for taking on the DNC? Um, not on a national scale by any means. Um, we don't have any. Um, we don't have any information to answer that right now. Though that would be great. Um, so let's see. We have one more question, and I think I can take this. What about the write-in campaign for Bernie? I am so confused. Um, a lot of people are confused yeah. about this write-in campaign. Um, the end result of a successful write-in campaign would still require that the new House of Representatives in Washington. Um, would uh, vote for Bernie Sanders to be our next president. Um, so there's hope, and then there's delusion. And I um, must say that I uh, fall on the side of delusion with that, because what we're looking at is districts all over the country um, that send, um, you know, 435 representatives, right, to the House of Representatives. The Republicans in deep red states um, have pretty much secured 217 of 218 votes that are required to um, maintain their reign in the House of Representatives. Um, we have scores of other um, uh, uh, districts that are not as deep red as those 217, but they are still red districts. Um, Red Sea of Republican voters, um, and all they've got to get out, all the Republicans have got to do is get one more seat, and they've got their 218 majority. So, folks, um, no one uh, would like to see Bernie Sanders um, be in the um, Oval Office more than the number one um, delegate from CD11. Uh, here in uh, West County in the East Bay in California, uh, but folks, it's the pipe dream of all pipe dreams. Um, do your own research, look into it, 
um, uh, someone put a heck of a lot of uh, research into finding out this narrow path to the oval. Um, we Can don't I, know <laughs> side of the I, fence they're working on, but yes, Jim, please do. You have a better shot. Your energy would be better put taking over the Senate. Mm -hmm. If the Democrats take control of the Senate, guess who's over the budget committee? <laughs> guess who's chair of the budget committee? <laughs> Bernie Sanders. <laughs> And there's quite now, a number that would be of some good Senate news. seats that are in play right now. Go look at uh, 538.com, go look at realclearpolitics.com and find out which Senate seats are in play. Nevada's one of them. Mm -hmm. And push to get the Democrats in. Uh, because then our president will have a better chance to get some things done that we would like to see, mm -hmm. our next president, uh, and we will be in a better position to pressure her to do the right thing. Yes, we will be. Rather than having a, a, a Republican Senate uh, that has just been that blocking continues, every, Yeah, that continues the gridlock that we've seen yeah. for the last eight years so in Washington. So that's where you want to put your energy right now, not on a, a, a long shot. A uh, writing thing to get maybe Bernie in you know, an extremely risky maneuver that probably won't work anyways. Go get the Senate. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, folks, if you're supporting a third party candidate, um, this is the year. This is the year that third party candidates ha actually have a voice um, in uh, through our friends at Democracy um, Now uh, online who have been allowing both um, candidates to speak out and, as a rebuttal to the um, national debates that are happening between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. So for the first time uh, in my adult life, uh, Jim, um, you're older than me, maybe you can share. Um, this is the first time that we have heard um, in my adult life third party candidates on a national scale um, be able to uh, answer to the quest same questions that um, the two establishment party uh, candidates are getting in a national debate. This is exciting, folks. Um, what we're looking at with third party candidates being able to secure 5% of the national uh, vote um, in November is $10 million in federal matching funds. Folks, that changes the entire landscape for the uh, presidential election cycle in 2020. Uh, $10 million in ma federal matching funds gets your message out. Um, and, you know, uh, folks, think, think seriously about this write-in campaign. Think seriously about how these issues that brought you into uh, Bernie's campaign um, affect you, how um, things like uh, student loans uh, being at an affordable rate or pray tell free college can affect your life, can affect the life of your children. Um, and let's think about how we can most strategically move forward to keep these issues alive. Keeping these issues alive means keeping them out in the forefront of the American consciousness. Doing that means you've got to advertise. You've got to have the money to keep your message strong. All right. Thanks so much for asking that question. I hope that that um, puts some minds at ease. Um, and do we have any more questions coming in? Okay. So let's see. What time are we looking at, folks? Okay. All right. We've got five minutes left. So again, we want to remind everyone that you can go back and view all of our election integrity uh, videos that we've been filming since August to educate you on the most progressive um, election integrity information that's coming down the pike. We can, you can find those all on YouTube. Um, you're going to look for the um, California Election Integrity Coalition. Uh, feel free to leave a tip in the YouTube bucket for us to help us continue um, giving you this great information on a weekly basis. We would love to um, have a little bit more high-tech filming and recording uh, um, equipment. You can help us get that. Yeah. Thanks so much. Something else you wanted to add? Well, one thing Richard already pointed out, the most important thing is become a poll worker. Volunteer to be a poll worker in November. 
you will learn so much about how the system works and then you start to be able to speak with, with a certain amount of expertise uh, about how the thing functions and you will start to realize what I hope became clear at the conference is that elections are extremely complicated, extremely difficult to pull off. People say, well, why don't they do this and why don't they do that? Uh, I'm sorry, but there's 22,000 precincts in the state of California. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of precincts and everyone is supposed to work perfectly. No, it's not going to happen. So we need to think about how we can get that working better. I wanted More to eyes on the process. Relies on the process and relies on the people. We need better training for the people doing this, which means the counties need more money, which means Sacramento should be coming up with more money for this. This is, again, where you have an influence because the counties are generally strapped for money to make this work, and this is part of the reason we saw so many problems in June is because they're, 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 they're using bailing wire to keep the thing together, and guess what? It doesn't always work. I want to make a, a, one more point a plea for the counties again. Um, there is, I have a, th I have to give credit to Beth Harris for noting that the people who are sending out vote by mail ballots, they're printing them and sending them out, have access to blank ballots, blank envelopes, addresses, uh, and they have access if not officially, they have access to signatures. Mm -hmm. Many of these operations are given the official a copy, a digital copy of the <coughs> official signature. Well, gee, you have everything you need to print on the envelope and sign it uh, and send in a vote by mail ballot. On top of that, you have the get out the vote campaigns mm -hmm. where campaigns call up and say, uh, have you voted today yet? Mm -hmm. And, oh, I need a ride or something. Well, they'll get you a ride. That's the ostensible point of it. But they can also find people who say, no, I'm not going to vote. Mm -hmm. So now they know who to vote for. Mm -hmm. And that's going into a database, and it can be all uh, right. matched together that's, electronically. That's I call this automated forgery. Mm -hmm where they have the signatures and everything, they can put together tens of thousands of vote-by-mail ballots and put them in the mail or hand them in because of the stupid AB 1921. They can bring in a truckload of vote-by-mail ballots in California and just hand them in and say, here. Mm -hmm. We need to find out who's running these vote-by-mail printing and mailing operations, mm -hmm. county by county. You can do that tomorrow. Ask your county who's running it. Mm -hmm. Ask your county what information they have. Do they have blank envelopes? Do they have blank uh, ballots? Do they have the addresses and the signatures? And find out who's running it. Beth Harris alerted. She, she, she did come up with the word automated forgery. Uh, we came up with that this summer. But she was on to this years ago as, as a potential threat. Because California is now up to 50% vote by mail, I just see this as a huge problem. And we're going to need county by county finding out who's doing the mailing. So Sounds like we've got our homework assignment on ballots. It's our homework Bernie. assignment. Yes, you can do we that do. start Monday. Find out who's sending out those ballots. Okay. All right. So. I think that puts us at 7 o'clock. Jim, thank you so much once again. <laughs> Always a pleasure. And folks watching us on the live stream, and if you're catching us later in the week, um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for putting in your precious time, energy, and effort to educating yourselves about the election integrity issues that we're providing you here on Ballots for Bernie. And we will see you next week. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. Bye-bye now.